Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about how to find a vector function or finding a parameterization for the ellipse that's lying in the xy plane. So the ellipse equation is 9x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 16. And to just make things simple right now, we are going to just do one that's lying in the xy plane. We are going to do more complicated ones in the future, like the tilted circle or the tilted ellipse. Okay, so for now, let's just get started. Um, how do we do this? <clears throat> The way that we are parameterizing in ellipse is that we can use the idea on as how we parameterize a circle. And so before we start, we actually uh, just want to review how we parameterize a circle first. Okay, so what happened is that let me just recall that a circle has the equation in this form, x squared plus y squared is equal to, let's say a squared, a is positive, okay? Now, the parametric equations for parameterizing the circle is that we have x is equal to a times cosine of t and then y is equal to a times sine of t and then t is between 0 and 2 pi right t actually increases from 0 to 2 pi what happened is that this will trace the <clears throat> will describe a motion that's starting from the point a0 because a is positive so it's actually a point that's lying on the positive x-axis and then um the curve which trace in the counterclockwise direction as t goes from increases from zero to two pi. Okay, so <clears throat> um, <clears throat> that's how we parameterize a circle. What happened is that uh, we can also show how why this will work because that's actually related on how we can parameterize the ellipse. And it's basically adjusting this parameterization to fit the ellipse. And so how <clears throat> Like how does this give us the circle? We can actually use some algebraic manipulation to eliminate the parameter t so that we can get back to this equation. And so what happened is that we can square the x, square the y, and add them together, okay? So the x square is actually, what is that? That's going to be a square cosine square of t. And then the y square is equal to a square sine square of t. So now when you add them together, Right, so when you add them together, let me get a line right here. So when you add the two equations together, right, so when you try to add them together, what happens is that we are going to just get x squared plus y squared on this side, right? So we get x squared plus y squared on this side. And then what do you have on the right-hand side? The right-hand side is basically adding those two together. But we can factor out the a squared. So we are going to get a squared is equal to... I mean, a squared times cosine square of t plus sine square of t. Do you see what's going on here? Cosine square plus the sine square with the same argument t. What happened is that that will turn into a 1, right? So we simply just get a squared. So do you see that we have x squared plus y squared is equal to a squared? That's the same equation that we have here. Okay, now let me just box this one. This one is actually... Um, it's not really part of the solution, right? But we are using this idea to parameterize the ellipse. Okay, so let's actually start working on this problem. What happened is this. If you just look at the number that's in front of the cosine t or in the sine t, it's actually the same number that we are getting here. And to keep things simple, we are just going to just make this uh, a positive number for now because um, you can also have a negative number right here, right? So that would also give you the the ellipse. What happened is that if you use an, uh, a negative number here, but just to keep things simple for now, we are just going to just make it positive. What happens, okay, is that because... <clears throat> This a right here, if it's positive, it's actually the radius. And for the ellipse, what we all we need to do is that just all we need to do is to just modify those two numbers, right? And so we scale the x and the y differently. So that means instead of having the same number in front of the cosine and the sine, we have different numbers, and then we are going to get the ellipse. Now the question is, how do we change those numbers? How how do we scale the x and y so that we can get the ellipse? Um, let's look at let's go back and look at this equation first. Okay, so um, we have this equation, 
And let's try to write this equation in the standard form of the ellipse equation. What does it mean by standard form? We want to have a one on this side, right? And so what happened is that we can divide both sides by uh, 16, okay? So we have the 9x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 16. And then we divide both sides of the equation by 16. Then we are going to get what? 9 x square okay plus 4y square is equal to 16 and then what we are doing is that we are going to divide everything by 16 okay like this <clears throat> and so we are going to get the equation the equation becomes 9x square over 16 plus um, what do we have here? 4y squared is equal over 16, and then we are just going to get 1 here, okay? Now, um, <clears throat> all we need to do is to move the 9 down to the bottom, move the 4 down to the bottom, so that we, do, we have a coefficient of 1 in the numerator, okay? The coefficient in front of the x squared is 1. The coefficient in front of the y squared can be thought of as just one also. But of course, you can just treat the whole thing as the coefficient. But right now, pretending that x squared is in <clears throat> just focusing on the numerator, we want the coefficient of x squared to be one. So what we can do is that we can, because this is multiplying by nine, right? So that's the same thing as um, dividing by its reciprocal. So if we move the nine to the bottom, our equation will actually turn into x squared, okay, over 16 over 9. Is that okay? Those fraction lines looks a little bit too ugly right here. So let me just make a straight line here. Okay, continue. So now the y squared, okay, actually the 4 and the 16 can be canceled, as you can see here. So the 4 becomes a 1, the 16 becomes a 4. So we don't need to do too much right here. So we simply just get the y square all over, okay? And then what do we get? The denominator is just a 4. And then you just get that to be a 1. <clears throat> okay, now, what happens is that we are going to use the parameterization. So we are going to use this parameterization. So, and the parameter equations that we're going to use is that we have x is equal to, now instead of using the lowercase a right here, I'm just going to give that a new name. And uh, of course, we are not going to use the same number in front of the cosine and the sine. So we're going to use different numbers. So I'm just going to put, let's say capital A right here. So capital A cosine of t, and then y is equal to uh, capital B sine of t. Okay, and then what happened is that t is still going to go from 0 to 2 pi, okay? Now, the question is, what should a be and what should b be, right? How do we find a and b? All we need to do right now is to plug those back into our equation, and then we can find a and b. So let's just plug those in back into the equation, and let's see what happens when we do that. <clears throat> so now, continuing from... This equation here with the a and I mean the a cosine t and the b sine t plugged into the x and y respectively. Okay, so what do we get here? Um, let's say we call this one this one. Let me just use screen for this one. Okay, and then the other one, let's just use um, let's just use yellow for this one. Okay, so we have what we have something square. What is that something square? That something square is the a cosine of t. Is that okay? We still have that 16 over 9 at the bottom. Plus, okay, and then now we have b sine of t square. And then all that over the 4, and that's equal to 1. <clears throat> and then so now, let's distribute the square. <clears throat> then we are going to get <clears throat> a square cosine square of t, okay? 
and then we have the what the 16 over 9 plus okay we have the b square and then sine square of t and then we have the 4 at the bottom and then the right hand side of the equation with a 1 <clears throat> right and so now let's actually put the a square over 16 over 9 together and then the b square over 4 together right and then we just put um just put that as the whole coefficient of the cosine square of t okay so <clears throat> that will give us a square and then over 16 over 9 and then cosine square of t plus okay and then we have the b square and then over right and then the four and then we have the sine square of t and that's equal to one <clears throat> now guess what um <clears throat> when is this equal to one now as you can see here if we in the circle if we factor out that a square the same number and then the cosine square plus the sine square that will give us the one right so what we want right here is that we want this to be one and then that one to be one so that so that we simply just have the cosine square t plus the sine square t so that we have the equation right so that means this a square over 16 over 9 is equal to 1 and then the b square over 4 is also equal to 1 so that will tell us that a square and then over 16 over 9 is equal to 1 and the other one is the b square over 4 right and then that's also equal to 1 <clears throat> Now, how do you solve this equation? You can move the 16 over 9 on this side, right? So you're just going to get, um, what do we get here? We get a square is equal to 16 over 9, right? And then what do we get here? We get b square is equal to 4. Okay, and we are just going to take the square root on both sides of each equation and then we are just going to get what do we get here we get a to be um, um, we just to make things simple we are just going to choose a positive number a and then also choose a positive number b so in this case when we do the square root of both sides we are just going to just choose the positive a right so we are going to get 4 over 3 and b is what b is equal to just 2 And see what's going on here we actually have found our parameterization and then you may say what is the answer then well <clears throat> i'm running a space here so let me just just put just remove this box right this recall box right here and then going back to here and then we are ready to write down the answer so the answer okay so how do we write down the answer the parameterizations would be x is equal to <clears throat> what do, what do we get here we get 4 over 3 cosine of t and then the other one is y is equal to 2 sine of t right 2 times sine of t and then the t is bounded by 0 to 2 pi is that okay now because we are talking about space curve right here and this ellipse is lying in the xy plane we also need a z right so we we also need to put down the z and so how do you put down the z if it lies in the xy plane we can simply just say that the z is equal to zero in this case and then <clears throat> what happened is that i'm just going to add an extra variable right here the z variable so we are just going to get z is equal to zero okay and then t is between 0 and 2 pi and then if you want to find a vector function for this simply just put this in the vector form so that would be easy so we have so we can just call this vector r of t so that's the vector function and then we have what we have the 4 over 3 cosine of t and then comma and then um, 2 times sine of t 
and then we have the zero where t has its boundary and then that's our vector function this is the this is the answer for the parametric equations form okay this is the vector form of the answer okay so that's it for this problem to help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. I want to work together with you to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for